I am Jermaine Purifoy, and you are here for our first episode of The Experience with Jermaine Purifoy, um, sponsored by Raj Chattanooga. Thank you to Shane Morrow. This is something we're going to be doing with local artists. And my first guest was my choice because he's a friend of mine. Um, oh. We have Mr. Carl. <laughs> we have Mr. Carl Cadwell here, a.k.a. a lot of you know him as Summer Dregs. He is a producer extraordinaire. Yes, I can say that because I've had the pleasure of working with you as well. Um, you've seen his work and we're going to get into all that. But he is my first guest and I'm happy that he is here. Thank you, Carl, for being here. You are my first guest. Thank you. You I... feel special, don't you? You should feel <laughs> special because, uh, you know, not that I had a long list of people like waiting, you know, but, you know, you were you were in my in my top. So, yeah, you, you're special. We're friends so we can do this. This is us having yes. a conversation. Yes. So, anyways, if you watched the Super Bowl, which a lot of people did, you may have seen a few commercials. Actually, if you watched the Super Bowl for the past three years, you may have seen some commercials with uh, Mr. Summer Drag's music in the background featuring one of our other local artists, Suavo. Shout out to Suavo. Um, and it actually aired this Super Bowl, and Carl did not even know that it was on. You were saying on your Instagram, people need to start telling you when... You know, well, like your commercial errors, probably something. That so you I think know. someone tagged me in a in an Instagram post oh, really? that that knew that I was involved in it, and that's how I found out. Uh -huh. Like after it aired, and I was like, "Oh, okay." TV FCU, yes. Yes. Talk about yeah. that a little bit. How'd you? How did that come about? Because for three years, wow, that's that's pretty cool, and it's all local artists involved. So tell us how that came about. Yeah, so uh, I had just done the remix for Swaybo's song uh, "Heaven on Earth." And that was with uh, Suavo and Johnny Balick. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fancy Rhino was putting together these, this like package for, to present to TVFCU as like, here's our idea. We want to write songs about like your services. And we want to, uh, you know, we'll, we'll put them together real nice and stuff. And so I was, they, they got me to be the producer before they got all the artists. And they got me and they already had, I think, two other artists, like Nick Lutzko and Spencer involved already. And then they asked me who else I thought would be good. So I brought in Suavo and Courtney. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how that came about. You did bring in Courtney. I was about to mention her. Shout out to Courtney Reed, another great talent here in the area. We both worked with her. Um, she's now home in Memphis. Uh, that was the first one I saw was uh, of Courtney. And funny thing is I was in the barbershop. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the barbershop and I know Courtney's voice. Like I said, I have gigged with her a lot. So I know her voice. And so I'm like in the barbershop and I had my headphones in and it was pretty crowded and I'm mm -hmm. hearing this voice and I'm looking, I look on the TV and it is Courtney. Jared was playing the drums. Yep. Who else was in that video? Uh, Chris Williams was Chris, in that yeah, video. Okay, yeah. And Dakari. Yes, Dakari. So that's the first time I saw the commercial in the barbershop. And I told Courtney, I called her and I was like, uh, so you just popped up on the TV in my barbershop. No big deal. I had to like hold in my excitement, you know, because I'm mm -hmm. like wanting to mm -hmm. scream that that's my friend. And then I knew you. I didn't I hadn't worked with you yet, nor had I met you. But I knew that you were a part of the production. So it was a cool moment. That's a really cool deal, especially for people who are wanting to get involved in that type of work, you know. And you pulled together the dream team, Johnny Balick and Suavo. Like, so what was that? Did you have other people in mind or you just knew like you wanted to, to use Suavo? I mean, which I don't blame you. Obviously, Suavo is so gifted. Yeah, and he works really fast. Mm -hmm. and, you know, when it comes to commercials, you, you have to be good, obviously, mm -hmm. but you also have to be really fast and you have to be flexible. Yeah. Because a lot of times, you know, with the Suavo one and with, the, with a couple of those, they're kind of like, you know, we, we did a, a version and they're like, well, you can't say, you can't reference other banks in your right, song. Right, right, right. So right. stuff like that that comes up that mm -hmm. you might not even think about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's quite the actor too, Suavo. So the one I saw where he's like the guy at the table and there's a bunch of Suavos at the table. I was like, man, yeah. Suavo is quite the actor. Multi, multi gifted guy. I'm saying Suavo. Suavo's going to be on this show too eventually. So <laughs> if he doesn't know it, he knows it now. <laughs> but uh, we're mentioning him because he's someone who is very well known here. Um, but here's what I want to do. So I want to get right into it amidst the pandemic. Um, Mr. Carl Summerdregs here. He was in New York right before New York went absolutely insane mm -hmm. uh he was in new york and we're gonna get to that working with bro chris who's actually from here yes he's he, same as me he was uh he's adopted from the north and the uh -huh. south uh, mm -hmm. kind of adopted mm -hmm. him but he's back in new york now right right and yeah we were up there working on a project um i want to say i flew out back to chattanooga on march 2nd or 3rd mm -hmm. of 2020 
And that was basically the first day that they found a COVID case wow. in New York. Wow. And you know what? And that's the thing. Like, at, I remember it tell, I told you I thought you guys were completing the project. Wasn't this – this wasn't supposed to be an album, though, was it? Like, was this going to start out just like – if it turned into a full-length album? Right. Well, I was just going to work on two songs right. with him, but we had such a great time vibing mm -hmm. on those mm -hmm. two songs that it turned out that I was going to do all the songs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on that album. And it was just one of those relationships where, you know, I, I have a lot of situations where, as a producer where I work with artists, mm -hmm. you know, where I'm working for them, mm -hmm. and I'm basically doing what they tell me to. Mm -hmm. But with Bro Crisp, uh, it was just one of those situations where, it was like we were working together, and this was like our our thing. That's the best. Every time I sent him something, he was like, "Like, oh my gosh, this is like exactly what I need." Mm -hmm. And every time he would send me something back, I was like, "Oh man, this is like inspiring me to like take this further." So it was very much that project was very much like uh, both of us together, mind melding. Mm -hmm. Well, you can tell all the behind the scenes footage you guys post on Instagram, like clearly there's a, a connection. And I say this all the time when it comes to musicians, like chemistry is so important. You know, I've definitely been in those situations. I'm sure you have where you're just kind of you're working with someone and it just it's not there, you know, mm -hmm. and it doesn't say it doesn't take anything away from anybody's skill. Like you have skilled people in the room, you know, some writing sessions where it's like it's not that you're a bad writer or I am. It's just we just. This is this is not working. It's like right. relationships. It's like right. this just ain't gonna work, you know. And I don't know if that, uh, son, you know, sometimes there's ego involved in the situation and stuff like that. What I love about you, like I said, I can talk about him because I've worked with him in the studio. Like you are very easy to work with. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You are, you are. And I mean, <laughs> I I came to work with Carl because of So Chill. Shout out to Nabil who doesn't live here anymore as well it makes me so sad but we're going to get him on the show too even if we have to do it virtually um but i just remember putting the whole equation together knowing that you had produced courtney's single and uh and i remember being on that song in the studio and <laughs> i didn't know we were recording that day that was that was the <laughs> secret i never told until afterwards he was just like are you free on such such day? i was like yeah I'm, we're gonna go hang out with at this Carl guy's house, and next thing you know, y'all got the whole full setup. And I was like, "Oh, so this is happening right now," you know. And I still didn't know all the words of the song, so that was our first time meeting. But I instantly knew I was like, "Okay, yeah, this guy gets it. He knows how to work for the artist, like you said, mm -hmm. with the artist." Yeah. Um, there's no kind of like you know that weird thing of like this is my studio, so you do it my way kind of thing. I've just been in those scenarios, and they're just not fun. So when when you're working with an artist. You know, I feel like my job is to bring out the the best in people mm -hmm. and not just the best, but also what's special about them. Right, 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 right. And, you know, because in music, people sometimes want to, they hear something, they're like, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. But, like, maybe that's not what they're special about. Right, right, right. You know, right, right, right. and it's like, I want to sing this way. But, you know, so I, my job is a lot of it is to make people comfortable, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? A lot of times I'm engineering too, so I got to do the technical side to make sure that they're using the mic right and, and doing all that stuff. But mostly I got to make people feel comfortable to be themselves. Mm -hmm. And I do, when I push people, it's usually to do something weird. Like we'll be playing around and they'll do something. And, and a lot of times they'll be like, well, yeah, that oh, I was just playing around, but you know, that's when I'm like, no, that like that weird thing you did. Yeah. That's like, I've not heard anybody do that before. You know, that's the most exciting thing to me. It's mm -hmm. just when I'm like, I've not heard someone do that before. That's special. Like, let's lean into that. Yeah, yeah. That kind of happened when we were working together, too. And I remember mm -hmm. I was being like what the perfectionist, whatever you want to call it. And I was like saying, I was like, well, can you keep that? Can you keep that? You were like, dude, I keep everything. Like, <laughs> you just sing, okay? Like, don't worry about me. I'm going to do my job. And I was like, okay, yeah, but I don't, I don't like how I did that. You know, everyone has their things, like, uh, about their voice that they don't like. Well, you got to you gotta build that trust and you know usually it's on that first song when it's just about building trust yep. and that way i'm like I, I want the artist to be happy when they leave mm -hmm. but i also want them to trust me that if we do something and it sounds bad mm -hmm. i'm i'm gonna throw it away i'm not gonna use it yeah yeah, yeah. Just, just because it's there <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying it'll be on itunes tomorrow putting it up it'll be live <laughs> no and, and i'm glad you said that because i was gonna get into how you work um as a producer in the studio, like I said, I have the privilege of speaking from experience, but I, I can tell with you and bro, Chris, like you guys, it is a, a, a real collaborative effort. And, and Jungle Savior is just such a cool sonic, like sonically, like you said, you threw in, you just posted something about how you threw in like 
random objects and stuff to throw like breaths and then just sounds mm -hmm. and i love when this kind of stuff happens where people are like oh where'd you get that sound from it's like oh that was like a can out in my driveway and i came in you know and now it's on the track and so you do a lot of that was there a lot of that on this album until you said it i well until you posted that i, I wasn't sure and then you posted that video saying that it was a lot of human noises and things that you had pulled you know objects to to put on the track yeah so i i was highly influenced by uh i started out in a very experimental type bands mm -hmm. and i was highly influenced by bands like matmos mm -hmm. and uh apex twin and uh and even when it came to like my first love of hip-hop was the rain the missy elliott song that timbaland p produced mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. song has a lot of mouth noises has all, all of his production. it changed the game didn't it right nothing yeah. sounded like that when that came out yeah and all that early Aaliyah stuff that he produced mm -hmm. and that was just very exciting to me because it has that push and pull between these beats which are very kind of on the grid mm -hmm. but then there'll be like these like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. you know in there which i love and uh -huh. i love human sounds uh -huh. i love making i love anybody who knows my beats i love claps yeah i love snaps mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and like breaths using yeah. breaths and beats uh yeah i always try to integrate something unexpected yeah yeah that's the cool thing about you too i remember when we were working on something that bill came in and he started just kind of ad-libbing over like the ridge or whatever and it was literally him just joking around you were like dude let's keep it and i was like oh for real and now knowing you as a producer like like you said i keep everything i use everything and that's cool because maybe you you might not be sold on it in that session but you go back and listen to it and you're like you know what those random little claps that we did and there's a mm -hmm. laugh i mind you everything me and carl have worked on let me just throw this out none of it's released yet we are still working on it so it's not yes. like i or else i would just do a shameless plug right now and tell you to go and download it um but on one of our songs we're working on i am laughing on the track carl i'm <laughs> laughing and you know i have a very distinct laugh yeah at the end of the bridge i'm like <laughs> and every time i listen to it it's on there. i'm like i wonder if carl knows that i'm laughing on the track but i think that you like the fact that i laugh because i was laughing because nabil was doing his little thing and i was like oh cool this is funny and, and, and it's it's on the track so whether or not that makes the final cut or not we just will we'll, we'll have to see <laughs> but I, I like the fact that you just keep everything you do let's talk about you being a part of the rock rising collective Mm -hmm. um talk what is rock rise what exactly is it so they're basically like an artist support group in new york gotcha and so they have like a little studio set up in their apartment uh in uh queens okay in new york okay. and so they kind of host podcasts they uh will like help podcasts is kind of their biggest thing right now but what we're working on right now what i'm working on with them this will probably give you a better idea of what they do is is uh i'm working on a kids play so they happen to know all these artists that are involved with um, like these kids, uh, like kids musicals in New York, apparently is like a big thing. And there's like, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And so there's this like, you know, people have been getting tired of just doing the same Disney, you know, uh, plays mm -hmm. right with their mm -hmm. kids. And so we're writing an original one. We, the script is almost done. I'm working on the music right now. We already got three places in New York and the area like in New Jersey and, and Connecticut that are that are going to be doing these uh, this play that we're doing. Um, so that that's really exciting. Yeah, that's very exciting. And being a guy who also does theater, like we don't know what the current state of the theater world is going to be. Um, I know she put in your Instagram post as well as like coming this summer provided like. <laughs> corona lets us be great or whatever um and and children's theater like you said as well like it is a huge thing in new york and because theater shows are like live shows you know mm -hmm. and so i i think that's a cool thing i for one i because i was involved in kids theater as well just think of how cool it would have been to be a part of something like that you know where you're not and this is an original you know stage right. play you know and so it's, it's cool that you can be a part of something that's not you know you having to buy the rights to annie or whatever nothing against annie it's a great musical but i'm just <laughs> saying like it's cool that this is all original material right and people are gonna have to buy the rights yeah well to it so that right they'll have to buy the rights <laughs> to it right right that's cool carl you have your hands in everything i'm gonna skip down to uh this app that you 
are you in development for? Are you developing this app for autistic? You know, like, or is it something that's already happened? So yeah, I, I'm not involved in the development side, just the music okay. side. Okay, just the music, got you. Right, so I don't know all the science behind it. The person who's putting it together is a musical therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, and her name is Martha, and she um, just saw this, this connection between music and getting um, people who are neuroatypical, uh, kind of bringing them out of themselves. Mm. So even if, it, it, you know, she noticed that, I don't, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but mm -hmm. I know that it has to do with when people hear music that they know mm -hmm. or that has a beat, mm -hmm. even if they're like way inside their own brains, mm. then they'll start like moving to the music. Wow. And that can really bring them out of themselves. And so I've been working on basically working on royalty free music. Mm -hmm. um, to 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 kind of facilitate that mm -hmm. and the app will be like a, an easy way to access that right and right. to drop draw these people not just kids but I, when i was brought in at least the, the focus was autistic kids but mm -hmm. most it's like neural atypical mm -hmm. uh people that's crazy music is so powerful like that kind of stuff reminds me of just how powerful music is um and your music is affecting a lot of people you know we've talked everything from kids to this and that and and i feel like that is why it's the universal language you know my director in college used to talk about like even if you're not a musician music affects our lives you know if if you're in a restaurant a loud restaurant you know like everything you know it's 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 so i i, I like the fact that you are not pigeon held to like one genre or you know what i mean like well, and i've never be, known you to you, do that well, yeah and you gotta be like to make money in music you gotta be flexible I keep telling people and kind of willing you can't be to a one trick pony that's right and I mean, you, you know, can be but <laughs> right when i was younger i wanted to be uh cool Mm. And you know what got me into music in the first place, right? I wanted to be cool. I never yeah. wanted to be famous, but I like, I wanted to basically be with the cool kids. Mm -hmm. But as I've gotten older as a producer and uh, I have kids, you know, I will start out playing uh, in bands, but like now as a producer, like, you know, I feel like so much of what I do is to, uh, I don't know. I want to, I want to have that positive impact. Yeah. Well, you do, and I, and you know, that's not me just blowing smoke. I, I, you really do. People dance to your music quite a bit. Let's get into this because <laughs> you, we, you post these videos like, and it's really cool because I mean, every time you post, you say, "Hey, check out so and so who came up with choreography for my song," and then there's a video of them like on the Chattanooga Bridge, like doing these cool dance moves, and so a lot of people. Like you do dance music, obviously, and um, and I want to talk about the pop up project because I've had a chance recently to work with them as well. So talk about how choreography has been, you know, integrated into your sound. Was that intentional? It's just you know, like, cause you always post and you say, hey, check out this. Do you know these people on Instagram that you're posting about? Or are these like people who hear your song and then want to put it's, choreography? It's, it's to both. It? Okay. So on the one hand, there are. There are songs that I've produced that people will dance to mm -hmm. and they'll make up choreography to, but I've also been commissioned. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually doing quite a bit of that right now gotcha. where I get commissioned by dance companies. Mm -hmm. Now these are a little bit, so those are two different things. Mm -hmm. Cause like if I'm doing a song that's like a dance song that makes someone wants to dance, that's different than someone being like, you know, uh, sometimes the choreography is done first right. and I'm writing to the choreography. I'm doing that right now with mm -hmm. a company in New York mm -hmm. and uh, the dancer had already come up with the choreography and they're kind of like, here's the mood of the choreography. And, and they sent me a video of them doing it. It's about five minutes long. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I don't know. That was amazing where I got to respond. It's cool stuff. It is cool stuff. Yeah. I think it's cool that you don't know some of these people and they're just like dancing to your music, you know? Yeah. But like you said, like you are so like, you're so flexible. I've worked with you in the studio. I did tell you before that I pulled up something in my Dropbox and I'm thinking, I was like, what is this? It was the first a uh, demo of a song that we've done together and yeah. it ends up it doesn't sound anything like that now. <laughs> much like my random laugh is at the end of the bridge so i pull it up and i'm like what beat is this and i was like this is what carl initially sent me and then i told you i was in minneapolis i had this whole big epiphany i was like we got to slow it down we got to slow it down and so mm -hmm. now the song has become more of a 
a R and B type of ballad. But when that came on, it was like this dance beat that came on, and I'm like, dude, this was the original version. But yeah. it's a testament to you because you know how to just literally go in there and just flip it. And that's what's that's what's easy about working with you is that you're. I, and this what we've talked about this too. It's good to have a plan, you know, but you got to leave some room for that spontaneity as well. You got to. And leave that's a that's a, that. that's a thing that I learned at, at church, playing at church, is you always got to go in with a plan, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And, or else, like, you could just be chaos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you also got to be willing to, like, follow the spirit, deviate yeah. from that plan. And that's true in the studio, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? And I think sometimes when people get in the studio, they can get really nervous and be like, well, this is what we got to do, especially if they're paying by the hour. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but I'm just like, if you want to make something special, like, yeah, let's go there. And I'm not tied to my, like, you're my not, ideas. You're definitely not. Right? Like, with, with the song we were working on, mm -hmm. uh, when you were like, slow it down, I was like, Okay, let's try. I was that. thinking, I was like, he's gonna be like, dude, no, we're not slowing it down. I didn't know because I've worked with other people. Um, no, I, I, I mean, I might cool. say that because like, people have bad ideas. Yeah, that's and true. I, I might just say no. Well, but. it was just a shot in the dark, but I'm glad that you were able, but because I gave you a reference, right? So yeah. I was, I was glad that you were able to do that. See, for me, like you said, you have to be flexible as a musician, as mm -hmm. a creative. You have to be flexible. I came in and I was just like, look, I trust you. So you know, you tell me what you think, and because when you when you have that trust, it makes it much more easier, you know. So yeah. Before we wrap up, you know, I I want to get your take on uh, where we are in the current state of the music industry. You know, we both work in this business. Uh, obviously, we've all been hit. Um, tour musicians, w no matter what you do, if you're a session musician, work has just been really, it's just been really crazy for musicians. Um, how did you adjust? You know, because all of us had to clearly, well, we're still all having to adjust to whatever the new normal is. But how did you adjust initially? Like I said, you were in New York right before all this stuff happened and you guys were working on a project and you finished the project, obviously, <laughs> from Tennessee right, to remotely, New York. Yeah. How did you adjust as a producer? Because I know you're not on the road anymore. You know, I know you toured as well. Yeah. But how did you adjust just as a producer that does studio work pretty much every day? Right. I haven't, and to be clear, I haven't been on the road for, for years. That was, I know. Yeah. That was something that, that was kind of over when I, so you had the dreads. That's when I had the dreads. <laughs> I had to put it out there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to put it out there. Okay. Anyways, just, yes. Okay. We won't talk about the dreads. Uh, but yes. Yeah, so how did you adjust, you know, being a stay at home producer? Well, I, I, uh, I was just starting to do more sessions. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that kind of ended. I had a few mixing jobs, which got canceled because artists no longer had the money to pay me yep. for it. Uh, and a couple commercials, because they weren't shooting at mm -hmm. that time, they got canceled. Mm -hmm. That's when I started uh, doing Beat Buddies. <laughs> and I love Beat Buddies. Yeah, with, my, I love with, beat with buddies. my daughters, I would record songs with my kids and my neighbor's kids. Yes. And uh, we would write songs together that were really silly. Um, but stuff started picking back up once I got connected to some more people in New York. Mm -hmm. And some of the stuff in New York wouldn't have probably happened because, I mean, I, I was planning on being up there more. Yep. Obviously, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But, like, with this thing I'm doing with the, when I said the guy who, who did the choreography and I was scoring to it, right? Mm -hmm. He's in Chicago. The company is in New York mm -hmm. that's, that's paying for it. And I'm in Chattanooga. Right. That wouldn't normally happen mm -hmm. without the pandemic. Yeah. You yeah. know, and this is a job I might not have had. Uh, had it not been for a pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, you know, so you, you got to kind of find the, the advantages, right? There's yeah. not a lot. Yeah. I'm going to say there's not a lot, There's not, not. <laughs> but you can, you can find some of those advantages where you can like work in, like, you know, you got these people in New York paying like whatever, $4,000, they got to come up with $4,000 every uh, month for their rent or, yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm down here and I'm like, yeah, I can do this commission for uh, quite a bit less. So Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Which And it goes back to what we we're saying about flexibility. You have mm -hmm. to be flexible in, <laughs> because now you have to go to different alternatives, you know, uh, to make it as a musician. Um, my last question, because I literally could talk to you all day. Is, and I'm only <laughs> scratching the surface, honestly, y'all, of everything that Carl has done, is doing, will do. It's just a man of many, many, many talents. And you're a good person, too. You know, oh, that goes a long you. way. Because everybody ain't like that. Anyhow, I just want to say, <laughs> before, because I, I, I want to just ask you, like, when do you think, uh, or what do you think uh, will be our new normal as a music industry? You know, obviously, 
people are expecting things to pick back up with touring. Hopefully, fingers Ooh. crossed, knock on wood, whatever you do, pray. Uh, in the summer, all these festivals, uh, I mean, live music is it's a special thing. Virtual is great, but it's nothing like live music. And so what's your take on that before we go? Like, do you feel like, I mean, of course we're hopeful, but what? how do you think it's gonna pan out? Well, you know, I'm not really connected to the live music world. Mm -hmm like uh directly mm -hmm. you know i work obviously with a lot of artists who do live shows uh but for me what i saw at the beginning of the pandemic is a lot of people setting up studios like in their home yep. or uh more private type situations mm -hmm. and i think that's gonna be you know as far as like production goes um you know not remote but it's just these kind of big studios that, that people are already moving away from yep that are yep. gonna that are you know, hundreds of dollars an hour, mm -hmm. and they got these big consoles. Um, you know, if you want to do that, then those are still there. Right. But we don't need that mm -hmm. to make music that's as high quality as as it is. Right. Right. You right, know, right. and we can do it in smaller spaces. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and basically in my setup in my attic, I feel pretty comfortable doing almost anything recording wise, except for maybe drums. You know, yeah, you can. And I learned that because <laughs> different story. I sent my drummer on a dummy mission, <laughs> bringing that <laughs> he had to bring his old stuff. I was like, oh, Carl has drums. He's got to play the drum. You're like, oh, wait, no. <laughs> right. And it, it works. My space works for drums. If, I if love it's a your quiet, space. Yeah. yeah. If it's a quiet drummer, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, and he's so not even close to that, as you learned. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, you know, I love you. I love working with you. Uh, you are just... Uh, you're one of the most gifted musician friends that I have. Um, and oh, I just, you. oh, and I, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, you know, it's a, uh, it's a pleasure to be able to work with people who are also your friends. You appreciate each other's talent and gift, but yes. you're also friends. And so I just, uh, man, Carl Cadwell guys, AKA summer Dregs, He's got a whole lot of stuff coming up. As you can see, just one quick thing about beat buddies, go on his Instagram and watch beat buddies. His daughters are hilarious. <laughs> They're the cutest thing I've ever seen. You know what it reminds me of what it makes me think of. It makes yeah. me forget that there's so much. Cause once you get into this music thing professionally, it becomes about a lot of other things, you know, the business. Right. What I notice when I see stuff like that, I'm like, dude, in their minds, they're creating the best song ever. Like, there's no worries. Mm -hmm. There's no kind of thought of, will it be pop? Will it be this? Will it be, will it be commercial? Will it be radio friendly? No, they like, are, they're doing it just because they love are it. Kids definitely first idea, best yes. idea. Uh, and I, my one daughter likes to, I have, I have this little program set up where she can actually make beats mm -hmm. and then I play piano and then my other daughter sings mm -hmm, and like they were oh, the tuned together. in she is yeah. definitely your daughter because one of those videos you were like what should we do should we keep this she was like keep all of them i was like <laughs> yep that's carl's daughter carl don't delete nothing he keeps everything um thank you so much for joining me carl thank you we're gonna do this again you know we're let's, friends let's so we're gonna do this and we are working on some new material I'm not gonna give a promise out of anything but we are developing some things um and uh man it's a pleasure to work with you and i um, mean it's a pleasure to have you as my very first guest Woo! at the experience with jermaine purifori thank you so much for being here and thank you all for tuning in we're gonna do this more and uh man Happy Sunday. Whoop, whoop.